Having a strategic business partner can come with many advantages. It can help you gain a competitive edge over your fiercest competition while also providing you a community of support to work through your toughest business challenges. For Lenica Steven, that's all she thinks about as the founder and owner of Interactive Business Optimization Services. She helps businesses and small business owners become less overwhelmed so that they can focus on their products, services, and providing the best quality of life from a business standpoint to their clients. She joined me this week to talk about the importance of building quality business relationships, her business, and so much more. I'm Kevin McShann. Let's have this conversation. Excited to learn all about your business ventures and about your journey as a business owner. So great to see you this afternoon, and thanks so much for being here. No, no problem. Thanks for having me. So I know your business, when we look at your business, it's all about helping people with their strategic uh, business planning needs. So could I'll start you off by asking you, can you just explain your business model and how it works? Yeah, sure. So um, my business, we provide, it's, it's, it started out as providing operations um, leadership and support to small and medium businesses, um, enterprises. So often acting in the capacity of either an operations consultant or a fractional part-time COO, which is a chief operating officer. So our business model is to provide, we work virtually with these businesses. We provide them with an outsourced operations leadership and support. So um, our primary goal when, when I work with clients is to remove what I call the business overwhelm um, from those business owners um, by helping them with a solid foundation through um, team management, operations management, and project management, and establish their systems and processes. And the goal of that is so that they can be free to focus on growing their business, often through sales and marketing, or you know, working with their own clients and, and customers one on one. So we take care of all the operations stuff and helping them provide the structure. And I know that you're a big believer in uh, strategic partners both in business and in life so can you explain that philosophy for me yeah no problem so i believe in partnerships strategic partnerships you know that that um type of um way of dealing uh, both like i said in, like you said in business and personal because we've heard of the phrase a lot two heads are better than one and so this is this is one area that it also can apply um, while a lot of businesses of us that are in business, um, especially small and medium, you know, entrepreneurs and business owners, we're in business for ourselves. We don't necessarily have to be in business by ourselves. So having someone that can be that strategic partner, and doesn't necessarily mean they have to be a partner from like formalizing like a 50-50 share or, you know, having any kind of formal relationship in that sense, like being a uh, t traditional partner it can simply mean having a professional or a go-to person um, to collaborate with on your business strategy your planning you know your current uh, planning or strategy as well as your future and then the next steps so moreover um, you know to help with what I use is the five P's so I typically follow their purpose what's their business purpose along with their vision and mission helping them with planning looking at their processes the people on their team and then that all leads up to the last P, which all businesses strive for, I believe, is profit. 
Well, you can't stay in business without profits, right? So, exactly. Exactly. So, and according to a Catalyst Women's research report, it found that in 2019, women 15 years and older comprised nearly half, 47.4% of the Canadian labor force, compared to 37.6% in 1976, an increase of almost 25%. However, the first two months of the pandemic dramatically impacted women, with only 55.5% of women participating in the workforce in April of 2020, a decrease from the 61.2% of women who took part in February of 2020. Therefore, I asked Stephen, what's the key to establishing more women in the workforce, particularly of color? Mm, the key to getting more, I think just letting them know that they have a community, if that makes sense. So like I said before, like we all can be in business for ourselves. We don't necessarily have to be in business by ourselves. So I don't necessarily see other business owners, even in similar space as mine, as competitors, because we can all help each other, lift each other up. Um, so um, I would say if there is a woman out there um, that looks like me, you know, a woman of color that um, wants to or is looking at starting their own business, um, there's communities out there, there's people out there that will champion you and that will cheer you on as you're going um, forward, you know, and will help you um, with, you know, even start getting the, the, the basics off the idea. So don't be afraid to reach out, let people know. Um, heck, even let me know if you, if you want to reach out and, and talk with me, I'd be happy to um, extend any expertise I have, you know, from my journey thus far. And if I don't know the answer, I'd definitely help you figure it out or connect to someone that can. So I think finding the sense of community um, because we are out there that want to help each other succeed. And I think that's the key to being very successful is helping other people succeed. And personally, what brings you the most uh, satisfaction when working with clients uh, personal? Oh, um, I like seeing what I call the light bulb moment. So I like where when I'm helping them either by something as simple as helping them develop and understand their processes or helping them with planning, that there's just sense of relief and this, this light bulb that comes on, wow, I can actually see my vision coming to life because things are starting to get clearer now that I, you know, I'm, things are, the fog is being lifted, or at least I have a, a, an idea of like, everything I envision is actually coming to place because I have things in place. So I love what I call the light bulb moment um, in people's faces or just their reaction of feeling their shoulders are dropped because they can finally see that their vision is actually taking place or taking place more than, than it is now. And when we look at business, uh, starting a new business, especially in the age of coronavirus, I'm also curious to know, uh, what would be your uh, message to businesses that are trying to climb out of the age of coronavirus? Hmm, good question. So I would say it would depend on your business, but um, one thing I would uh, definitely say to go back to is um, if you're currently in business and you have some level of clients or customers or what have you, go back to those previous or existing clients and talk with them um, and look at those relationships, listen to what they're dealing with right now, um, what they need during this time. Um, it may be something that you can further provide or additionally provide, you know, does your business provide what they may need at this point? Because at one point they did do business with you. Um, and if not, is fulfilling the needs that they have, something that you can help them with by creating a new product or a new service, which of course would be in line with your mission. Like you don't want to go totally off script, but um, I think that's one key to surviving is looking at your current base because these people bought from you in the past. If you are new to business, listen to what's going on out there. And if something aligns with what you feel is in your heart and what you want to provide, um, start small and just um, you know start by offering to the people that you know, your immediate family, friends, your war market, and then go from there. That, that's, that's a 
basic way I would say would help. Stephen says, a critical component and tenant of any successful business is the ability to formulate sustainable and long-lasting relationships with the right people. Ooh, um, the importance, I think that's actually very key because um, there's a quote that stuck with me uh, throughout the years um, from Maya Angelou. People almost always forget what you say, what you do, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. So I think establishing quality relationships with your clients, even if it's just them purchasing an item on your website, um, when they remember how you made them feel through that experience or how the product made them feel or how it helped, that they'll always remember to some extent. Um, and, and maintaining them, you know, even if they haven't been a client for a while, just reaching out and seeing how they're doing every now and again, whether or not they buy from you. Um, those things matter because they may not buy from you, but they may know other people and pass that on. So client relationship is key, in my opinion. Yeah, I've got two more for you. And the first is for anyone looking to start a new business, um, mm -hmm. as, since you have experience in business optimization, what would be your message to them about where to start planning an effective a strategic a business plan or partnership? Hmm. Um, so if someone is starting in business, um, I'll take it back, I guess, to the five P's that I go through, um, uh, which are purpose. So why are you starting your business or why have you started your business? And I say that in the sense of, is it something that that you're good at so like if you're good at accounting do you start a business in accounting or is it something that you love because that often makes a difference in especially in the ups and downs so you to my opinion the first thing basis before you start a business you have to really want it because it is quite a journey um rewarding just understanding why you started or why you want to start um, and what you're doing is it something you're good at or something you enjoy or both looking at that because sometimes you're you're good at something you may not necessarily enjoy it that may play into a factor when you actually have your business the big piece at this stage it's a big piece any stage but i think especially in the beginning is planning like you just mentioned so um you don't necessarily need to have in my opinion a business plan in the formal sense but you do need to plan your business and what i mean by that is um, looking at what types of products and services you want to provide if it's just one or the other um who are you providing it to um target market you know a lot of people may hear that term is it women men certain age groups you know certain demographics having that plan having that outlined um if there's any any kind of applicable research and it doesn't have to be too in depth maybe like but it's a good start to get some research on what the current market situation looks like so does your target market already have what you're providing already use it or is it something that you, you saw that it was a need or a gap that's been identified and now you're looking to provide it as a product or service? Um, another one side note I will say to that, if your product or service is completely new, it can be completely new to the market. So the research may not be readily available. I'll take it back to um, Henry Ford has this, he, you know, a lot of people know him for the automobile. He may not be the original inventor, but he was the one who brought it to market and mass produce it for sale. And I think I heard one of the quotes that he said um, that he's known for is, if I gave the market what they wanted or what they thought they wanted, they'd have faster horses as opposed to automobiles. So, so if there's a product or a service that you believe, you know, that is something that you truly and ethically believe is something that would serve your target market, a good, a, a, something that's brand new may actually be the way to go. Um, that would be on a case by case basis. Um, so planning that and then also looking at um, your finances, right? Your, your, um, all that's involved, like, is your business going to be virtual? Is it a physical space, you know, working from home versus having rent to pay? So that's going to be a factor. Um, do you have people that you're going to be working with um, on this, like a business partner or someone you with special talent or expertise that you need to provide the service? So if you're working in a restaurant, which may not be, I don't know how that industry is doing that well, but certain certain um, companies are still doing pretty well in that um, space at this time um, do you need to hire a chef or you know certain people with specific staff that will factor into cost 
um, as well before you start do you need staff to help you provide that product or service in the beginning um, you know you, that's the people side if you're looking at processes think about how you're going to market your product and service is it traditional to saw you know uh, social media how are you going to deliver your product and service is another one um, and like I said finances are always a big thing if you're working virtual what that's going to look like are there costs to supplies to your vendors um, there may be other factors to consider and and that would depend on the type of business you have but those are some of the core i would i would tell anyone to start looking at and and you can get um deeper as you go along from there yeah fascinating i'm glad that i combined my last question because i think it's interconnected so mm -hmm. uh, do, uh i've also curious to get your thoughts on because we talked about diversity earlier when, mm -hmm. when it comes to women but i'm also curious to get your thoughts on the importance for business owners to hire people uh, with uh, disabilities because i think it's a space that not enough business owners look at to sort of uh, propel their business forward so i was mm -hmm. just wondering your your thoughts on that particularly in the the digital space which you're in and mm -hmm. then just finally outside of business what what uh do you like to do when you leave the office okay so the, to answer the first one um yeah i think um having a consideration well the word disability i i, I think it's just abled in a different way just put it that way um because especially especially in the digital world there's people who have skills that you and I who may not even think about. So I, um, so if I understand your question correctly, is what to consider when hiring those people or just to consider them? Because I believe everybody, it doesn't matter if they are, I'll use the word non-traditionally abled um, because the digital space has so much um, ability for people to do, um, to use applications to help build websites or, or do a podcast or do, you know, YouTube um, that nobody should be ever discounted because the world, the digital world virtually is so vast that it would not, at least personally, and anybody that I've worked with be a consideration of um, thinking about um, a disability in the traditional sense because I've worked with people of all different abilities and I have not felt a gap in anything I've worked with, um, you know, with them because sometimes their perspective is a lot different. Like if you're serving a certain market, they may think about, hey, you need to put a ramp in this building and sometimes we may not think about that or, you know, you need to think about maybe putting your menu in Braille. That's something, again, we may not necessarily think about because for some of us, that's not a primary um, hindrance or, or, or anything in our lives. So I think it's a huge, huge value to have anyone that's, um, to have diversity, um, be it by the way we look or the way we operate or the way we think, um, because there's so much of us out there that we need to have that consideration. We need to have a, a broad, a broad um, view. Yeah. yeah, a broad view of how we deliver our products and services. And grant, granted, what you have as a product or service may be so specific that it may be like a hair product for black women and yes it would be beneficial to have black women on on your staff because they would understand the target market but i think also having an outside in view of someone who's not in there would also help maybe um add that maybe unique spin to what you're offering so i i definitely always would um you know hire and look to bring on someone that's not exactly like me or aligned with me because i have someone on my team that speaks three languages and there's certain things that she brings up with the way i talk and the way i communicate that i would not think to you know because she's coming from a different perspective so i'm all for it and i would always encourage people to look at well-rounded not just hey my target market's black women so maybe i should just hire black women i don't i don't think that's necessarily um it'll be pigeonholed if, if you know what I mean, you'll pigeonhole, I think, you're yourself. Gotcha. Uh, and what uh, piqued your interest outside of the office, just finally? Good question. Um, I like to read. I'm a, I'm a big, uh, maybe a little bit, of, I don't know if I'm a book geek, but I love a good book. Um, I love spending time with my family and friends, quality time with um, family and loved ones. 
that's huge for me i think especially now that i didn't always see them in person so when i do it's like amazing i'm just getting outside just a walk backyard fresh air and again maybe because it's summer here in ontario for people who are watching toronto is nine months of winter so even just getting outside um you know and um enjoying nature especially being inside for so many months but yeah i i got to completely we've got a value in the summer days why we still have them right because we know how the ontario winters could be right yeah i, I mean value the winter days too because because you know we have some beautiful days that are winter but i i enjoy outdoors not an outdoorsy person but i enjoy getting getting outside for fresh air every now and again Fantastic, fantastic, Monica. I want to thank you for spending a few minutes with us and for your time this afternoon to talk to, to us about to effective business strategies and opening up a little bit about your personal life. I really enjoyed the conversation and thanks so much for being here. I enjoyed it too. Thank you so much, Kevin.